My name is Stephanie Rudy, for those of you who haven't met me, and I am the community chair for the Conference on World Affairs this year. Um, we, we, we did a strategic plan last year, and the new organizational chart has the community as well as the university on an equal footing. So as a community chair, if you look at the organizational chart, my, my bubble is here and John's bubble is right here. So we're on equal footing. So it's actually the university as well as the community who put together the Conference on World Affairs. Um, and we want everybody to recognize that. So um, my responsibility with the conference is the program. Um, and so all of the people who come in, and there are over 100 of them this year, who have actually come in to help put together the program. So we're responsible for inviting the participants, uh, and we're responsible for putting the program together. Um, if you don't know, how the conference is put together is really enormously interesting. It's, it's one of the reasons why we get participants who come back every year because they have such a good time. Um, we don't, when we invite a participant, we don't tell them what we want them to talk about. We, no, we ask them what they want to talk about. So they send us topics, and we try to tell them, um, don't just stick with your core competency. Tell us the things that you really enjoy talking about. Uh, so some people will send us five topics, some people will send us 85 topics. It's amazing. So you may end up with a, uh, we have one musician this year who sent us who sent us topics on equal rights and, and income inequality and, and uh, all kinds of politics. So we will, we will put him on a panel to talk about that. He's not an expert, but it's something he really enjoys talking about. And we want our panels not to be academic dissertations. We want them to be conversations. And so the other thing that's really fun, uh, we're doing a, a performance this year called So Many Guitars. And we found actually one of the people who's coming, who is a constitutional attorney and teaches at, at, um, in New Orleans, um, he was the original, some of you may remember, he was the original Vince Vance and the Valiants. Do you remember Vince Vance and the Valiants? Am I the only one to remember Vince Vance and the Valiants? He was the original Vince Vance. So he plays Zydeco. Um, and we have a scientist who's in a rock band on the weekends. And we have somebody else who's in a rock band. And so they're all going to come together with our professional um, guitarist and do a thing. They are so excited they can barely speak. Um, this is an opportunity. Generally when a scientist goes to a conference, they're talking about science with other scientists, but this is an opportunity for people to come, scientists to come and talk to uh, musicians and talk to politicians and talk to um, religious people. And it's, it's a, really, it's a different, different kind of environment for them. So um, they get to say what they want to talk about. And the really exciting, fun thing is when you take all of those topics and you try to find three or four people who want to talk about the same thing. And John and I were talking, um, just standing outside here, the absolutely fascinating thing, and you psychotherapists in the group might be able to figure this one out, because I haven't been able to figure this one out. We have 100 people coming. We probably got 1,000, 1,500 topics. Not one topic on Obama. Not one topic on Trump. It's kind of like they want to come into this, this special place in this boulder and talk about anything. <laughs> Just get away from what they hear all day long. So, so um, you won't see a Trump panel this year, and you won't see an Obama, the, Ob the legacy of Obama, which is, I thought, what we were going to talk about this year. But uh, it's not happening. Uh, but I think it's a great program. We're very excited about the program that we have this year. Um, if you don't know, um, this is our 68th year. It started back 68 years ago. The first participant was Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, so we have... Um, um, quite a history. Um, a couple of things you might notice different this year that we're trying out to see how they work. Um, we will have, I believe the last number was 228 panels. Um, so there's a lot to, there's a lot to choose from, including our, the, that includes our keynote and plenary panels. Um, so there are a couple of different things this year. Like I said, everybody gets to tell us what they want to talk about. And we found we had coming this year 18 people who wanted to talk about uh, climate. Um, and these were people who know what they're talking about when they talk about climate. So we've put together a climate series. So the conference will start on Monday at noon. 
um, with a plenary by Bob Inglis. I don't know if you remember Bob Inglis, but he was a senator from South Carolina, Republican senator, who came out in support of climate change, climate change and lost his seat because of it. So he's coming to speak about uh, what businesses can do um, to help solve the climate change problem. So he's going to start out, and then every day the, during the week, we will have a different panel on climate change. So there'll be a series, and that's not anything we've ever done before. So we're kind of excited about that to see how that goes. So there'll be a series on climate change. Um, you may have read that we have um, started this year to invite some what we're calling guest speakers. Some of them are local, some of them are not local, but they are people who will come in and appear on probably just one panel. But as if, for instance, we don't intend to ever um, build a panel around a local speaker. The reason why we're doing this is occasionally we have, we have panels that we're putting together and we realize that although we have three really good people who can speak about it, there's a little part that's missing. And if we had somebody who could speak to that part, it would perhaps be a perfect panel. So um, as a for instance, um, while we were having planning weekend, uh, Justice Scalia died. So we immediately put a panel on the program about Justice Scalia. Um, so we had people who can talk about the leg legacy of Scalia and the people who can talk about um, the, the, uh, the decisions that he made while he was on the bench. But we also found an attorney in Denver who clerked with him from 2008 to 2009. So we think he brings a really interesting perspective on Scalia that we don't get in the people that we have on this program. So we're going to ask him to come in. In fact, they're having lunch with him right now as we speak to find out if he'll do this. We're going to ask him to come in and sit in on that on that panel and talk about his experiences with Scalia because we think that will bring a better a better presentation to you guys. Um, there's another panel that we're going to do on that's very uh, a lot of people want to talk about, which is the whole issue of death and dying now, which has become a very big thing. Um, and we had three people who were coming at it from a caregiver's perspective and from a medical perspective. But some of you may know Constance Holden here in town who uh, ran the hospice for such a very long time and is now running an organization called The Conversation Project, mm -hmm. which, talks, which, which really deals with how you talk to your family about what you want when you're dying. And so she brings a perspective that we didn't have. So we're going to ask her to come in and sit on the panel um, and, and give her perspective. So that's what the whole guest speaker thing is about. Again, it is not that we're going to build panels around local people. We just are going to use them um, to fill out panels if they bring something that we didn't have uh, represented. Um, we want to have some roundtable discussions. Um, if you are familiar with the conference, you know that generally you come in and everybody speaks for about 10 minutes, uh, and then we open it up to the audience. And we thought it might be an interesting thing, instead of having four 10-minute speakers, to have a moderator who actually moderated a discussion. So instead of having four speakers, we're going to have a discussion. You guys who don't participate in the conference miss all the best part when at dinner at night, the four people who were on those panels actually get together and discuss <laughs> what it was that each of them individually said. And so we thought it was important for you to get to hear that kind of uh, discussion that they have. So it's really, it's actually fascinating to hear them talk about when they get together and talk about the, um, uh, the panel title. So that's going to be another thing. We're going to have this year an evening keynote. I'm sure that you've seen that Steve Wozniak is going to be our keynote speaker. We are moving it to the evening because it is one of our goals to get more students. It's also one of our goals to uh, present the conference to people who don't generally have an opportunity to come, and that is people who work all day. So we're doing the keynote in the evening so that more students are able to come and so that people who work all day can come. Um, and we're doing the last thing, which I think is really interesting that we're doing. Um, we're going to do a lot of collaborations. There are, as I said, one of the goals is to get more students. There are, count them, 700 student organizations on campus. And so our feeling was, if you want to get the students, why don't you go to them? Um, so we, I found a, an organization called the CU Timmy Global Health Project. And this is actually a group of students who go down into South America in the summertime and um, help bring health care to um, people down there who can't afford health care. And the head of their program is a guy named Dr. Chuck Dietzen. 
And uh, I went to the students, and the students said, do you think we can have him? Uh, and so we invited Dr. Chuck Dietzen, so he's going to come in. So we've collaborated with the students on that. Um, we've collaborated with the CU Innocence Project on bringing Corey Wise to the conference this year. Corey Wise, if you don't recognize the name, was one of the uh, Central Park Five. And um, he, after how many, 16 13. years, 13 years in jail, um, the Innocence Project was able to get him out. And so uh, we've collaborated with the Innocence Project on campus to bring him in. So we are reaching out to the organizations on campus uh, so that they can help us bring in speakers that their students would like to hear so that we can increase the number of students who go. So um, that I hope that all of you have gotten a list of participants. We have about 100 participants this year. Um, one more. Um, we love them all. Um, one, what, I just, I'm, I'm going to bring up one of them for you. His name is uh, Matt Seitz. And for those of you who've been here for a while, uh, you know that Roger Ebert used to come every year and do a, an Interrupt Us uh, with a film. Uh, Matt Seitz is the head of the RogerEbert.com um, website, and he is delighted to be able to be here this year to continue on with, Robert, with Roger's um, Interrupt Us. So, so please come and hear him. Um, anyway, I will be available for questions afterwards, but I'm going to let John talk about the kinds of things that he's doing. Thank you. It's a lot to live up to. Yeah. So, um, so I'm my name's John Griffin. I'm the, the director, of faculty director for the conference, and um, uh, you know I wanted to, I guess, first thank the City Club for inviting us back. I guess this is the third time I've been here and I've always just found it such a welcoming place mm -hmm. and great um, uh, discussion, great questions, a lot of enthusiasm for the conference and just really uh, warm. So I, it's really nice to, to be back and um, I really thought it was, um, when I was you know invited, I really thought it was important that Stephanie join us to, just to um, affirm something that she said, which is that um, the conference is, is really a collaboration between the university and the community and that um, Stephanie and I stand on, on equal footing with respect to the conference. We both sit on the board. Uh, we have different areas of responsibility, and arguably hers is actually more important. <laughs> actually, <laughs> it's, pretty much, it's pretty much obvious. I mean, so this is the, the, the fruits of Stephanie's labor with um, over the last uh, nine months, um, working with her program committee, which is composed of community members and some CU students and a, a few faculty. Um, and and that that uh, group you know, recruits all of the speakers, designs the entire program. Um, it is very much a bottom-up um, process. It is not a top-down process. Um, so what's left for us, at, you know, to do on the campus is sort of the boring stuff. We do the logistics. We we do the venues and the security and the fundraising and the marketing and um, all of the elements of that that are sort of behind the scenes with the, with respect to the conference. Um, and um, and so I just you know I just wanted to make sure because I think a lot of people even people who have been in, um, attendees of the conference for a long time aren't aware that um, the uh, conference is designed by the community um, and if there's an, an aspect of the conference that you would like to see um, enhanced or changed the best way to see that happen is not to tell me it's actually is to volunteer to join this group and, and get involved in the in the group that plans the conference so um so anyway i wanted to you know this this is just an incredible achievement stephanie has put together an incredible uh, list of speakers and the program is really really exciting this year um and um, i'm just trying to keep up with her because she works about 60 hours a week on this thing as a volunteer so um, she's really to be commended for that. <clears throat> um, on uh, sort of our side of the ledger, uh, you know, our big accomplishments over the course of the summer and the early fall, uh, for those of you, you know, many of you are, you know, you know leaders in, in business and civics uh, spheres, um, we've, we've had, you know, we put our very first sort of comprehensive strategic plan in place for the conference. Mm -hmm. We did that with a, a group of people that included members of the university and the community, um, <clears throat> students as well. Um, and uh, we have a governance structure in place, um, which, uh, as I've already mentioned, has, a, has the very first board for the conference. Um, we have a nine-member board, 
which includes four uh, individuals uh, representing the community, four uh, representing uh, university faculty staff, and then one student on the board as well. Um, and uh, the board has been um, has been great this year. Um, and then um, the uh, the yeah so strategic plan. Um, the board and the governance structure are the sort of the key um, structural things that that, that you know, we've we've put in place. Um, in terms of some of the um, enhancements on on our side, uh, this year we're going to have for the first time an, an app for the conference. Um, so if you are a smartphone kind of person, um, you will uh, be able to download an app, which will basically make the program uh, disposable uh, for the most part. So you can. Identify your panels, build your own personalized schedule for the week. Mm -hmm. um, you can look at speaker biographies. You can look at uh, a little bit fuller description of the panel title and what the panel, the direction the panel might go in. Um, you can rate the speakers. You can rate the panels. There'll be maps. Um, there will be polls. We can we can push out information if there's a venue change or a speaker falls ill or something like that. We can push out information. To you. So I'd really, um, you know, encourage you to consider downloading it and telling your, you know, friends and neighbors to do that. Um, we're really hoping that we get um, good um, uptake with that, and um, it'll allow us to green the conference a little bit this year. And, and mm -hmm. it, it, actually, looking towards next year, if we're able to demonstrate that we don't need to print as many programs, then next year we'll be able to have a substantial sort of savings in terms of, of that. Um, we will. I mean, people love the paper program, and we're we're absolutely not uh, looking to eliminate the paper program. I I think you know it's just sort of you know it's like the newspaper. There's some people that always want to hold it, and I so uh, we we recognize that we we did a survey of our audience after the last conference, and one of the most highly rated valued aspects of the conference is the program. <laughs> so so we recognize that. But, sorry, you have a question. Um, can you search by participant to see when their panels? Yeah, so you could click on a participant, and it'll give you all of their panels. Um, so it's yeah, relational database. So okay. yeah, um, there's other features I'm probably forgetting, but um, and uh, and it's it, we've committed to basically to do it for four years um, with Cvent, and they're looking at other enhancements in coming years, um, and so it's you know it's a, it's a it's a really nice tool. So and. Um, Another um, uh, thing that we've done this year is we've created a newsletter. So every month we put out information. Um, we, we want, uh, and this is, the app is related to this idea too, which is we want to be more of a year-round presence in, the, you know, in sort of the lives of people that are in, interested in basically free access to learning. So uh, we, we have an Athenaeum program, for example, where we bring in speakers at other times of year and they give a public lecture. So we had... Um, in October, we had Jill Becker come from the New York Times. She's an investigative journalist. Um, she's a CU alum. And she's fabulous. And um, we had an artist, Mike Giant, um, who the students loved. He came in, in January. And then in March, we have Linda Greenhouse coming from um, Yale Law School, also formerly of the New York Times. And um, she'll be with us for a couple of days and, again, do a public lecture. So. We want to make sure that those types of events, um, whether we're owning them or whether we're partnering with other things that are happening on campus, it'll always be free and open, whatever we're advocating um, or sharing with people. But we want to make sure that we can get information out to you about some of the um, some of the, you know, the exciting things that are happening with the conference. So, um, so if you aren't on our fans list, we have a list called CWA Fans at Colorado.edu, um, and if you subscribe to that, then you'll get just about one email a month from us that just lets you know, you know, uh, here's some, you know, here's a speaker list that has just been announced, or we have this Athenaeum guest that's coming next month, or, you know, here's the new members of our board, or, you know, or announcing board elections and things like that. So just trying to be, um, you know, a little bit more communicative. Um, and the third thing I was going to talk about was... Could I borrow you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stephanie, anyway. Stephanie, yeah. Um, was increased, uh, visibility. increased visibility. So we, um, so this is consistent with one of the things that Stephanie mentioned, which is um, we want to make sure that um, that uh, the conference is accessible and uh, to everyone. And part of being accessible is that they actually know about it. <laughs> and so 
Uh, we are we are investing in more marketing for the conference to um, drive traffic both to um, in-person venues but also online. Um, as Stephanie mentioned, we have more panels this year so we can accommodate a larger audience. We're also looking at um, identifying overflow venues in case there are panels that you can't get into so you can um, uh, you could view the conference, view the panel, in the, like if it's a live stream session in another location. Um, uh, and, you know, really trying to reach out to that sort of um, 25 to 45 year old sort of segment that, that we, you know, it's a challenge for us because we're, you know, we're sort of a nine to five, Monday to Friday conference. We are, uh, um, did you mention CW at night? No, go. So <clears throat> we are. Um, <clears throat> Just in a modest way, experimenting with doing some things in the evening around the six o'clock hour so that people who are working during the day could um, come up to campus. And there's a lot of free parking on campus after 5 p.m. And we can, you know, push people to those locations. So you can imagine coming up after work and seeing a panel uh, before you go home in the evening. Um, so we have a few events at, at six or seven o'clock or so um, to try to see if we can um, bring more professional age folks in and, and frankly also some students it's hard for them to get to the conference during the day because they have mm -hmm. classes um, we've also uh, aligned our schedule you'll see um, that a lot of the start times are more uniform and that's because we're aligning with the, the bell schedule on campus so mm -hmm. that students um, uh, aren't sort of faced with a position of well I, if I go to this panel I have to leave in 15 minutes or you know this panel started <clears throat> you know, 30 minutes before I got out of class or something like that. So trying to just align that uh, better, trying to bring in um, more students and more um, sort of working age folks. So um, really, I think um, we're happy to answer any questions that you have, but I think that was that's about the extent of our presentation. Mm -hmm. Is there a quick summary of the strategic plan and kind of the out years, what you're thinking about? Yeah, so there's <coughs> six top line elements of it, and Stephanie can help remind me of them. Um, one is to educate, engage, and inspire. <laughs> these are sort of, um, so every element of these then there's, you know, sort of sub goals and metrics, but to, to educate, engage, and inspire, um, to diversify both our audience and our speakers and etc. cetera, um, to be a collaborative ex effort between the university and the community, um, to um, be uh, fiscally sustainable. How are you doing in that? <laughs> so, um, uh, I guess the fundraising people don't like us to talk about it, but we're, we have a five-year endowment goal. We haven't really kicked off that effort yet. Um, uh, and in the interim, we're relying both on continued university support together with um, you know, support, support from the community. Um, you know, I think um, we're going through a transition year on that front, um, but I think there are some encouraging signs. There's, there's people that are giving to the conference that have never given before. The actual number of people that are giving is, is going up. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, all you have to do is sort of look at the BIF, uh, the, the film, Boulder National Film Festival sponsor list. I mean, you open the, and then compare it with ours to see that there's a real missed opportunity there to just connect up with, you know, local uh, businesses that want to be civic minded. So I think we'll be pushing on that front, we'll be pushing on the individual support front, um, and also on the um, looking to government support a little bit too, looking to Boulder Arts and Culture for some support. And then another element that I'm really going to be pushing is uh, I'm going to sit down with all of the deans of the colleges on campus in May and have a conversation with them about um, about supporting the conference and it, because it's right now it's um, we're a public good and they're enjoying a lot of the benefits of the public good uh, because their students are attending our panels and students rate our the CWA quite highly in the surveys that we've done um, but at the college level, they're getting all the benefits without paying any of the costs. So um, the university is invested in the conference, but at, um, at the chancellor level, not necessarily at the college level. So um, 
I'm not sure if that answers your question. But if it is a true collaboration, which is what we want it to be, then the community needs to raise as much yeah, as the university sure. does. So that's the goal. The goal yeah. is that we raise exactly what the what the what the university does, and that's mm -hmm. the goal. Um, it has been, as John said, it has been a tough year. There are still people who <laughs> I think don't believe we're actually going to have a conference of world affairs, but we are. Um, so I, my goal this year is to put on a great conference and to get all of the negative stuff behind us. And I think once the community recognizes that we are here, we're still here, we're going to still put on a great conference, I think, um, I think we won't have the problem last year that we've had this year. Have you ever thought about collaborating with any of the other colleges and universities in uh, along the front range? Um, first, hi, Peggy. <laughs> um, uh, I think there's some interest in it. Um, you know, I think um, certainly at the moment we're, we're, we're just trying to, as Stephanie said, um, have a great conference. Uh, you know, primarily about 70% of our audience is from Boulder County. And... Um, so, so we're, you know, we are going to be advertising on CPR down in Denver, trying to get a few more folks up here. Um, we do get about 12% of our audience from out of state. Um, but we are a state university with other campuses, and I think there is some interest in, in, in that. I think, I mean, my, my first sort of impression is that Boulder is a, is a unique place that has this mixture of things that allows the conference to happen and you couldn't you couldn't you know the model couldn't be just oh well, we're just going to copy that in Denver or in the Springs that it's um, Boulder has a mixture of uh, very high appetite for learning um, the you know, um, I'd like to I'd like to cite this um, uh, Gallup survey which was done nationwide and they asked people did you learn anything new yesterday and Boulder ranks number two in the country in terms of, did you learn anything? Who's number one? Right? Provo, Utah. Oh, oh really? Really? <laughs> Wow. No. I would have said you're all there when I chose Provo, yeah. Utah. So exactly. there's a very high appetite for learning. Mm -hmm. There is a, uh, I guess I would say, average, you know, above average level of sort of discretionary time that people have and affluence. Mm -hmm. And um, we need people like, you know, Stephanie's committee is, I mean, at, at the core, it's about 30 people that are putting in, um, I don't know, an average of 40 hours a week, a week. from September to April. Mm. So, it's you know, and then, and then there's sort of another layer of that onion of, uh, of people that are um, putting in less time, but still over that entire duration. So... Um, <clears throat> So you need a, a group of people that have a lot of time, very interested in learning, very civic-minded, um, and then enough, you know, I guess, financial wherewithal to support the conference as well. So I, I don't know that you could just replicate it. Um, there's there's an interest maybe in doing some satellite events and things like that. We might start off with some things like that, um, like the alumni association is interested in doing things. So we might we might try some things in Denver or maybe even. Uh, you know, in D.C. or San Francisco, do CWA for a day because we've got a lot of speakers from D.C. and a, a big alumni <coughs> base out there. So, do something where we get the alumni in and have some of our speakers get together or something like that. But um, right now, we're we're very much still focused on home. <laughs> but there are two opportunities in response to your question. Um, in, in our strategic plan, one of our goals is to increase the audience. And people go, what? You can't possibly. How can you increase the audience? Uh, panels are always full. I can't get in. Um, but we can increase the audience, and we can do that by live streaming, which we're doing. Um, and so I would like to, at some point, maybe I can get it done this year, uh, go out to places like retirement homes. Those are the people who would love to be listening to the Conference for World Affairs, but it's difficult for them to get to campus. And once they do get to campus, you have thousands of people walking around, um, and it's it's hard. So can, can we get out there and say, you just need to know that there's this opportunity for you to watch um, the large. Mackie is live stream, 235 is live stream, UMC is live stream. So we do live stream the large things, and we live stream it now. So if somebody in Denver wants to get it, they can get it. If another university wants to get it. And I was also it, thinking, it, mm -hmm. you've got huge speaker resources yes. at CSU, at DU, Colorado College. 
-hmm. and the live streaming would be great because yep. you could have a speaker in Fort Collins uh, that could talk to the conference here, yep. as well as in Fort Collins and wherever. Yep. So I think that would be mm -hmm. great. Public schools also were. We're going to be streaming into Fairview mm -hmm. High School this year mm -hmm. and their auditorium. And then, of course, we, we have four or six panels down at Boulder High, like mm -hmm. as, as usual. We're doing more this year than we've ever done at Boulder mm -hmm. High. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, a lot of the public schools are... It's difficult when the kids get to um, high school for them to be able to take a chunk of time in, uh, in the public school. In the private schools, a lot of them are bringing kids... Uh, we have people coming from bus Pal loads. Palisade and yeah, bus all loads over the place. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's... It's really impressive. Um, so, has Google contributed yet? Uh, no, but they're on our no. list. If you know anybody, <laughs> yeah, not yet. They're really um, the Google people are really involved with STEM education, and I think that we can make a really strong point for. Uh, we're even doing a panel this year on STEM education, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. We ought to get a Google person to moderate that panel. Um, I think we have a really strong story about what we do with STEM. So I think you know once we. Um, get ourselves settled and can find some mm -hmm. little way to get into Google. Yeah, we would love to do that. Mm -hmm. Is the streaming going to be available like digitally online or is it just in certain areas that it's being piped into like Boulder High? Oh, oh no, it's no. online. Yeah, it's it was, online. Yeah, it was there last year as well. Yeah. Um, we're trying to get a beat on how quickly we'll get it up. It may be the next day. Oh, okay. um, a lot of the viewership is actually of people that attended the conference, but had that frustrating experience of having to choose between panels and then, well, you don't have to choose, you can go home and watch the other one when you get there. So, so they'll be archived? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, those three venues, uh, video and audio for everything. You yeah. can go online now. I think it's still You can watch last year's You can look at last year's. Right you now. can still, you can go on to our archive area and listen to, it's mm -hmm. Akrabeen. You can listen to Ted Turner. You can mm -hmm. listen to panels. Uh, when we were when we were doing our archives, um, there were a bunch of us that just took a summer and listened to all the tapes that had been stored in some storage room for years. Mm -hmm. And so we put on little headphones and listened to these guys. And you would listen to people and go, Nothing has changed. Yeah. <laughs> Not, it's, it's the same as it was 50 years ago. Nothing has changed. Um, but it's really, it's very, very interesting. It's really interesting. What are some of the macro numbers on this thing, like people attending and um, the cost to put this on mm -hmm. and things like that? Um, it's really hard to know the number of people who attend because you don't have to register. Yeah. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to buy a ticket. So you just go. Um, I can't tell you who you are. So we have people who eyeball how many people are in each session. So we figure we have 15,000 people who come and 70,000 butts in seats. That's kind of the way we figure that. Um, the price to put on a conference like this, we tried to uh, figure out one year what it would cost if we had to pay for everything. I mean, can you imagine just the, the volunteer hours that, that are spent to put this thing on are amazing. These people who come, come on their own dime. We don't pay their way right. to get here. Oh, I was wondering. That. Uh, no, we don't pay their way. And when they get here, um, we put them up in homes in the community. So that's what, it's a really, it's a big challenge when you call these people who are big in their field and you go, we've got this really great conference for you to come to. You have to pay your way here. We're not going to pay you when you get here. And oh, by the way, we're going to put you up with some people in the community. Um, They're really nice. <laughs> but they're really nice. Um, it's clean. And it's clean, right. And it's difficult. Fast. It's difficult. But once you get them here, the amazing thing to me is always, once you get them here by Thursday night, they're begging to come back. Please invite me back. Please invite me back. Um, so, you know, if we had to pay for that, uh, I, I, they did a, a couple million dollar budget one time is what it would cost to put it on. Um, our, actual, um, our actual budget, again, which is deflated by all these factors, sure. is uh, about half a million. That's and amazing it's, that you can pull that off. Yeah, and it's of that about two ten is uh, actual operating, and then two ninety is faculty and staff salaries and benefits. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's um, incredible. It's a very <laughs> lean. It's a very lean operation. Yeah. Are you worried in any <clears throat> way whatsoever about you know? Potential of some sort of 
violent event or terror event or anything like that. And there are people that worry about those things. And <laughs> big yeah. groups coming well, I, I, let's talk about it in an abstract sense, which sure. is just like five years ago, would you be concerned about it? In, in any large gathering, right? So I, I think... Not that much. Yeah, well, so um, we have a... Uh, it was New York City, I'd worry about it. Now. Yeah. So we have um, this fellow, Alan Culpepper, who's our, our director of operations and public relations, and he um, he comes from a background of uh, uh, running races. Not well, actually, he ran races, but then he he executed running races all over the country, and um, he had enough experience with people who had had heart attacks and kids that got lost and all sorts of protocols like that mm -hmm. that um, <clears throat> he's been hard at work. To develop um, a you know, a um, you know, an operations plan, a emergency plan for all sorts of aspects uh, related, like you know, uh, related to those, um, and so you know, we, he's met with the police, you know, campus police department a couple of times and things like that. So I think they're I think we're as ready as we've ever been for something like that. Well, we hope not. No, definitely. We hope yeah. we wasted our time on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know that uh, in groups like this, that sometimes there's varying experience with the conference. Some people may know a great deal about it, others less so. But you know, there's there's no questions uh, to whatever straightforward to ask. So as a, a moderator, <clears throat> several times on the climate panels, um, <clears throat> I've been, I recently responded to the communication. Oh good. But it indicated that um, the program had not yet been finalized and as soon as it was finalized. Right. So, Last night about midnight. Oh it was. <laughs> okay. so this is more or less reflective even though oh, rooms and people. times haven't been Rooms and times are done. Oh, they're now done. Yeah. Oh, right. So I'll be, I the, need to right. yeah, so watch my email some more. We'll bring, um, I don't know if you all come regularly, but we'll bring a pile of programs and they'll have them at the desk here. Um, I know we're supposed to have the thing to the printer on the 8th of March. I don't know how quickly they turn it around, but as soon as it's back, we'll bring some down. Mm -hmm. Great. Are we going to talk about any special ones you recommend? Is, that's not the purpose of today's oh, uh, Well, I know in the past we, we would come with the program in hand and it was sort of exciting and we're a little don't, under, yeah. Don't miss David Wilcox. Don't miss David Wilcox. He's going to do the most amazing thing this year. Um, he's going to do for five people, you're going to be in the black box and five people will get up and tell their story and he's going to write a song about you. Oh my God. After you tell your story, he's going to do five. Five individual songs for individual people who are willing to tell their stories. So that's an exciting thing. Uh, we have, I don't know if you guys saw, what was it, last weekend, two weekends ago, um, the uh, journalist who was taken prisoner in Bahrain, um, young lady who was taken prisoner in Bahrain, she was scheduled to come to the conference. We were terrified for her. Uh, she is out, and she... It, the most fascinating thing, she was taken prisoner in Bahrain, and like a month before that, she was taken prisoner in Egypt. So she's going to do a little audio on why I risked my life to bring you the news. Um, there's a guy coming named Hoi Tran who is going to do uh, Vietnam 40 years later. Um, Tim Worth is coming back to do um, a presentation on Wednesday night. He's going to be a CWA at night. Um, uh, uh, Vicky is he still Hunterson, running the UN Foundation? He or is. Or he retired? I don't know. I think know. he's retired, but he has an office there, yeah. as far as I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the main, I'll jump in, but I, I think the, it's, the conference is really deep. I mean, you know, it's not necessarily like you could look at this list and say you recognize 40 names, but when you start looking at who these people are, it, it would, it's almost a shame to highlight people because there, there are sure. so many strong people uh, that are on this list. Joe Serencioni coming back? He is not. Not this year. Not this year. Um, well, can, you know, we, can we put a check mark against those that we should? Uh, you can put a check mark against them. Oh well, I mean, you know, again, it's all—it's going to almost be personalized. Like, yeah. I think yeah. the people that stand out to me are Corey Wise, um, again, who was Central, Central Park, Park Five. Five. Uh, he was exonerated after spending 13 years in jail, and um, he, uh, I think, he has a remarkable story. Sophie Karasek um, is one of the young women who. Who's um, 
was, was featured in the Hunting Ground movie. She was assaulted when she was a student at Berkeley, and she sued Berkeley under Title IX. And she was actually on stage at the Academy Awards. Um, oh, watched yeah. them when Lady Gaga played. She was actually standing right next to the piano there. Mm -hmm. um, Vivian Anano um, is a young woman yeah. from Africa who gave the opening address in the UN Open last year, uh, talking mm -hmm. about how young people should be involved in running the world. This guy, Serta Popovich, as far as I can tell, I think that he was this—he was a student that basically led the revolution in Serbia. Like it, he was—I think he's a pretty, <laughs> pretty big deal. Um, Bill Martin is coming. He's on—he was on the Olympic committee. Um, and was an athletic director at University of Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, so he's coming. He will be spectacular with the young lady who wants to talk about being raised on campus and football and athletics and how all that comes. Bonnie Burton, who's on the front page, she is a young woman who was involved in Star Wars. And you might have read about her. It was a kind of a silly little thing, but she actually married R two D two one day, um, and they had a <laughs> they had a ceremony and everything. That'd be worth going just for uh, that. Yeah, <laughs> just you need a woman who married R two D two. So that'd not be fun. Yoda? How in the world did she pick, not pick Yoda? I, 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 I just like R two D two better. I mean, if you're into like politics and history, I think this guy Daniel Stid is um, is a, he's a really impressive guy. He's at the the Hewlett Foundation, um, and he writes widely on public affairs, public policy, history, the founding. Um, Jose Antonio Vargas is our Molly Ivins plenary speaker. That's the closing plenary on Friday afternoon. And Jose Antonio Vargas is a he's a he's a writer for the Washington Post. He is undocumented immigrant. He's also gay, and he um, is sort of a rock star among young people. Uh, he's an activist um, on questions of uh, immigrant rights. Um, I think he's going to be fascinating. Ellen Sweets uh, was a really, really, really good friend of Molly Ivins. She and Molly wrote a cookbook together. Um, she just left. She just moved out of Texas and went to California because she couldn't stand to live in Texas anymore. Um, but if you ha if you knew anything about Molly Ivins. Um, you will know that she wouldn't have a friend that didn't have a weird sense of humor, and Ellen definitely falls into that category. She is hysterical. Um, um, one of her, I, I told you everybody sends topics, uh, and one of her top, one of her topics, she's a, a food journalist um, and writes cookbooks, and one of her topics was real men like big thighs, and it's about chicken. So <laughs> <laughs> you, won't, you won't see that title on the program because there weren't many people who wanted to talk about it. Um, but you will see her on a food panel and maybe she'll bring it up. <laughs> I wrote an article for the Elephant Journal that said uh, size matters, finally the evidence we've been seeking. And it was about the amygdala. Ah, okay. <laughs> and conservatives. <laughs> um, Mary Wilson was a former um, president. Just of the League of Women Voters is coming. Ellie Boldman Hill is uh, currently a state representative in Montana. She was here two years ago. She's great. Um, she's a, I think she's a Democrat from, yeah, mm -hmm. from, from Montana. Um, Renee Marie will be the um, vocalist at the jazz concert. She yeah. was just up for a Grammy. She is spectacular. Yeah, we have three new, we have a new, we have a trombone player. Uh, he's supposed to be incredible. Uh, and, uh, a guitarist uh, from LA, again, who is nationally uh, known. And then um, Renee. Um, and then a lot of the other elements are the same for the jazz concert. If you Ernie remember Wass, from a couple of years ago, Ronnie Barack is, a Ronnie Barack is coming back in Gooding. Yeah. And Ronnie Barack and Gooding mm -hmm. will have a panel together called Together Again. <laughs> I think uh, it's going to be. You've never yeah. seen them, they are special. I mean, if you're into the arts, I think there's a lot of fun, um, innovative things that the arts uh, subcommittee is trying this year. They're putting rappers together with cellists, and they're putting dancers together with uh, vocalists, and there, there's going to be a lot of performance panels. So I would, if you're into the arts, I would keep an eye out for those. Um, I think um, there's also going to be, um, uh, at least it's in the in planning to have an arts day. So um, a lot of the arts um, units on campus are interested on Wednesday from, say, 10 to 2 um, of 
<coughs> featuring what they're doing in the arts on the Norland Quad. So this this has um, been something that's been talked about for a while. Still trying to clear the final hurdles, but the idea would be to have film studies projecting a movie on the wall of Norland under the shade so you can actually see it. Um, on the steps of the theater, there's a play that's being presented to you on in front of humanities, there's a ceramic throw wheel, and uh, there's reading poetry next to the Robert Frost statue in Old Main, and just all around the Northern Quad, there's sort of like a little circuit, <laughs> and you, you go around and you see all these sort of artistic things that are happening, and it's, that's not owned by us, it's not a CWA event, but there are, we have a lot of concurrent events this year, so these are things that are happening mostly on campus, some off campus, but they need to be free and open to the public, and then we will put them in the program so that, you know, just gives our audience another thing that they could consider going to um, while they're on campus or, you know, to round out their week. So there's, um, we have a lot of films. There are two other things that are going to be really interesting collaborations. Uh, we have several uh, visual artists who will go, and it's in a program, uh, so that the public can be involved if they like to. They're going down to the CU Art Museum where there's a new MFA show hanging, and they're going to walk through with the artists and uh, talk to them about their art, critique their art. Oh, and then, and then on the set. Oh, I, wanna, oh, I, I wanted to talk about that one. <laughs> no, go ahead. You can. No, no. No, you can. No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, excuse it. Uh, so, there, I guess this happened years ago, and there was a little confusion about what it was, but this year it's very going to be very clear. There'll be a jazz master class. So the there's going to be three or four jazz bands from the music the College of Music in Mackey, and so all of the performers will be students, but the all the jazz musicians will be the panel or like the audience basically, like like the American Idol judges, you know, and so they'll. And they'll go up and they'll talk to the students about, oh, you know, maybe you could have tried this or, you know, and it's very interactive and mm -hmm. you, it's open to the public. So you can watch, you can watch the professionals teaching the students their craft. And I think it's going to be, you know, it happened once before and it was extremely popular mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in a much smaller venue. So it's going to be in Mackey and it should just be fabulous. So it's, a, it's just called the Jazz Masterclass. Do you so. know time? Day, oh, day no. Oh, it'll be day. It's, <laughs> yeah, midday. We have one guy coming. This is a new thing for us who speaks only Spanish. Um, mm -hmm. And he's coming. He um, is from South America, and he came from a very, very, very poor family, and his family thought that education was important. And as he's grown up, he's become involved in education, so he's actually started schools in some of the poor areas of South America. And he's coming, <clears throat> and... Uh, we will have, because we have the people to do it, it's wonderful, we will have two panels in Spanish um, that he will be involved in and our other participants will be involved in. And then he will have what we call an aria uh, with a translator to talk about what he's doing. And then we're sending him to Boulder High School to talk to their Spanish classes. And he's going to go to two mm -hmm. Spanish classes on CU campus. Mm -hmm. So we're making this amazing um, <clears throat> opportunity with him. It's, you know, we've never had anybody who doesn't speak English. Um, mm -hmm. And so that, I think, will be a, a really interesting thing. Didn't look through everything, but is Terry McNally coming back? Terry McNally's not coming this year. He actually mm -hmm. was interested, um, I can't recall the so conflict, conflict, but we were actually in correspondence for a while, yeah. and he was very interested in coming. So I think, um, you know, I mean, I guess um, if you counted noses, I think you'd find that uh, we have about 30% uh, are returnees and 70% are, are mm -hmm. new speakers. And um, that presented a special challenge for Stephanie's committee. I mean, it's a lot more work to invite someone to come to a conference for the first time. Yeah. Um, but I think I, I, if I counted the number of people that have told me you should try to bring more new people versus you should bring more returnees, it's a pretty... <laughs> I know uh, it's actually only people. I, no one ever tells me you should bring more people back. They always say you should bring more new people. Is that uh, split pretty consistent with previous years, or is that a no? I mean, no. That's a, quite a shift. Uh, in previous years, it was sixty percent returnees, forty yeah. percent new. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we'll just uh, evaluate it on a year by year basis. I think that continuity. Everybody recognizes that continuity is really valuable, and just trying to get that ratio right. So. We'll, we'll say, we'll ask our audience afterward. 
did you like the the, the ratio, or would you want to see it adjusted? And we'll, we'll listen to that. So. Out of That's curiosity, what? did that just come as a natural mm -hmm. progression, or was there some factor that contributed to that shift? Or there were some people who, because of the problems that we had in the spring, said that they wouldn't come back this year. Um, there were some people who uh, mm -hmm. we actually have. There was a letter signed of people who said they wouldn't come back. Uh, five of those people have changed their mind and are coming back. Yeah. So um, that was circulated by mm -hmm. the subterfuge of right. angst. Right. Um, a, a lot of the people said, I won't come this year, but please invite me back next year. Um, so, you know, we're just going to play with it and see how it goes. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're excited about the people that we have. Um, I think it's going to be a great group. And sure. I think another aspect of it that's very natural is that um, you know, because of our financial model, a lot of our um, speakers come through connections to our vo a volunteer base. And our volunteer base had some turnover as well. And so we have a bunch of new people that have sure. connections to a bunch of new people. Sure. And so um, they, it, only, it was only natural that, that we would have um, sort of an infusion of new blood. So, sure. I mean, we, we weren't hesitant. You know, Stephanie's committee invited uh, a number of people and didn't, you know, uh, to say, well, if they want to say no, they can say no, but well, we're going to invite them anyway. Mm -hmm. so. Another thing we did, um, which was really interesting, uh, we went through a list of, if you go online to Wikipedia, you can see a list of um, important CU people, graduates. <laughs> and we went through that list, and Bonnie Burton, the lady who married R2-D2, is one of them. There's a gentleman <laughs> by the name of Aaron Bailey who uh, went to CU and as a student at CU, he went to London for a semester and just never came back. Uh, he's a psychotherapist there, but when I got in touch with him, it was really interesting. Uh, I emailed him and said, hi, you know, this is who I am and I'm with the Conference of World Affairs and he does a lot of work on the internet and what it's doing to your brain, which is a pretty interesting topic for me. So I said, you know, I hope you remember the Conference of World Affairs from when you were a student here. Would you be interested in coming? And I got an email back from him just like that and it said, can I buy my ticket now? He said, my student self never thought my professional self would ever be invited oh. to the conference. <laughs> so um, we're going to, this year you'll notice when you look at the program, there will be a little icon. What is it? A, is it a, a Ralphie. A Ralphie oh, uh, next to all the seed grads yeah. because I think that's important. I think it's important for the students to know. These people yeah. went to this university and now they're back, and we want sure. you to do the same thing. So, uh, we think that's kind of fun. Yeah, I, yeah. There's a lot of great people. You know, I mean, I just keep looking at some of the people we haven't mentioned. I, I think, you know, the I was thinking about this morning. You know, that CU has this this be blank sort of motif that's going on: be bolder, be curious, be engaged, etc. And I, I was thinking. Because uh, we've been sort of searching around for what is the best moniker or for for CWA, be worldly is good, but I, I think even better is just like be multidimensional. Just be, don't be so narrow, you know. <laughs> and there's so many people. If you look at this list, this guy Alex Berezow, he's um he's a physicist. He's got a PhD in physics, and then you you when you were asking what he's interested in talking about, he says, well science or European politics or religion or sports, you know, and he's just like, I mean, he's just like, he's everywhere, you know, and I mean, you look, at, you look at his topics or the things he's written on, his blogs, and he's, he's perfect, you know, or this guy, Adam Schrager, or James Tanabe, James Tanabe, Tanabe. 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 yeah, physicist and mathematician, and now he's an artist, Circus yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so I, I think that's the, you know, oh, yeah. that's what we're looking for, and both among the speakers, but also encouraging our audience, you know, don't, uh, don't, you know, try to find ways to resist the temptation to be so narrow. There's something about Steve Wozniak in this conference? Yeah, yeah he's the keynote. Keno. 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 Oh, okay, okay, because I didn't yeah. see him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, yeah. Oh, we printed this when we weren't allowed to tell it or something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> There's another interesting guy who's been coming for a couple of years, Jeff Lieberman. You guys might know Jeff Lieberman. Um, he's an artist and a scientist, but he's decided this year, <laughs> he's decided this year that he doesn't want to know what his panels are. He doesn't want anybody to tell him what his panels are until he gets on that stage and sits what? down, on and then you can tell him what his then you can tell him what his panel is. Like jazz. Um, he, didn't so. get one. He, he, he wanted this by himself too. Yeah. yeah. Just where the, the moderator just says, "Okay, Jeff, can you please talk? Start talking about anything. Whatever." <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so that takes it to a whole new level. <laughs> yeah. They do keep you on your toes. <laughs> well, that's what Donald Trump does, right? Or no? <laughs> oh, my apologies. Well, and even the jazz musicians. You know, one of the interesting things that I learned this year in talking with the trumpet player Brad Good, who's he's the music director for the concert, was that these um, these musicians that are coming in they really welcome the opportunity to talk about something other than music and to do something other than play music. That, that they want people to see them as well-rounded people, that they are on, you know, like Stephanie likes to talk about Don Grusin being um, on his local water board and wanting to talk about water issues, you know, that they're, they're complex people. They're not just, you know, someone that plays an instrument at your command, you know. So... Um, his degree think, is in economics. <clears throat> You know, so it's it's great that, that, you know, I think all they're all staying around for the week and they want to be on other panels and um, just just like everybody else. So. Mm -hmm. Life feeds the arts to right. make them, mm -hmm. the art itself, multidimensional. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Is it like <clears throat> previous years that uh, like City Club couldn't kind of... Um, Host somebody? Yeah, be in the back sort of... Uh, Separate. If they're out here and wanting to do something, is there anything? Because you would invite them to come here. Yeah. Well, um, it's okay if the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, there are certainly speakers that uh, are doing things while they're here. You know, like whatever. I mean, it wouldn't be unusual or untoward for someone to do like a book signing at the Boulder Bookstore or something like that. So if you had a right. connection to them. Um, you know, we, we like them. It, part of this, what makes this event special, is the level of commitment among the speakers to, to being engaged with all the other speakers for a five day, you know, period. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, there are plenty of conferences that they can go to where they're on a panel. There's not that many where they're going to be on a wide variety of panels. There's not that many where they're going to be there for a long time and they're going to interact with all these other people and come away with all these connections and friendships and that's that's what our, that's that's why they pay to come, you know. Is that it's an enriching opportunity for them, mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we do sort of have to keep an eye out that we don't have them running off in too many different directions. But um, you know, I, I think there's going to be some discussions. You know, if depending on um, on what our audience is this year, if we if we end up with a really a, sort of a burgeoning audience. We might feel some pressures to look for off-campus venues next year. Oh, next you know, year. <clears throat> next year. Okay. Um, if you look back in the old programs, it's not as if that's a you know revolution. There was panels that happened in the previous years at Chautauqua, mm -hmm. at Boulder Public Library, at the Fox Theater. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, we we want you know we want to we don't want the conference to be closed to people by you know artificial constraints like that. So. You know, uh, I think there's, it's special that it's on the campus. It's nice, mm -hmm. um, but we'll have to have some conversations if, you know, if we have those pressures. Where do they eat lunch? The speakers. Yeah. There's a lunch room in the UMC, okay. like yeah. a speaker designated lunch room. We do feed them. It's the one thing we do for them. And we provide transportation for them. The transportation is amazing. Um, students provide all their transportation. Is it by car? It's by car. What about if they wanted a bike? Did they bike? Yeah, so Charlie Vanderhorst is, uh, he was here last year for the first time and he said, I loved it, I loved it, it was great, invite me back. But next year, can you get me a pass to the rec center and can you get me a bike? A bike? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Charlie Vanderhorst. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm okay. happy to donate it. Oh, I mean, to loan a bike. Yeah, 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 that'd be great. Um, Charlie's staying with some bikers. Oh, okay. Uh, He's we, a do big, ha we do housing. Guy. Um, yeah. If anybody's interested, we do housing. Um, the community puts up all of our participants, and we're in the process right now of finding homes for all of them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it's I'll check um, with my wife. I check I'd with my wife. It, it's great fun. Yeah. I would love it's to great do that. fun. And our cars, uh, we have eight vehicles that are being loaned by Audi Boulder okay. as courtesy cars mm -hmm. for us for this year. Mm -hmm. And the students get to drive them around. The students, mm -hmm. it's. The students, and I've had two grandchildren go to see you, and not one of them got involved in the conference, for which I will never forgive them. But the students who get involved get to meet people in high places. They get, they get internships. They get jobs. They get 
places to stay when they go overseas if they meet these people. Um, they get help with whatever term paper they happen to be doing at the time. Um, but uh, great contacts have been made with the students and that's why they love to go to the airport and pick them up and have 45 minutes coming back with these people in the car with them. And one rule we have, <laughs> one conference rule, I don't care who you are on this list, if you're ever rude to one of our students, you never come back. Mm -hmm. you no, never come back. If you're ever rude to one of our students, you don't come back. Mm -hmm. So maybe in the evening, since there isn't much going on after the evening things, the musicians want to jam somewhere, and they want a beautiful venue like City Club. Mm -hmm. That might be something mm -hmm. that's, that's open. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. do they mind City Club members hanging out watching? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's my idea. It's definitely, yeah, I think it's something we could definitely throw in the mix. Um, we're sort of up to here this year right now, I think. <laughs> but, um, it's definitely a possibility. I mean, of course, I'm not the one to, to say it's okay, but <laughs> yeah, I thought of it as, yeah. a, as an option. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to leave. Yes, yes. Okay. So we have one more oh, oh, thank you. Kudos to, to you guys for you. doing thank this you. because it's oh. amazing. Thanks, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.